Framed by Malawi, Tanzania, and Mozambique, Lake Malawi in the heart of Africa is situated at the southern end of East Africa's Rift Valley. It extends more than 600 kilometers from north to south, is up to 80 kilometers wide, and in some sections is over 700 meters deep. To explore the third largest lake in East Africa, we begin north of Malawi's eastern coast at Thanduzi Beach in the Chilumba region. Close to the bleak town, the coastline looks like paradise. Out in the hot sun, the local people wash their laundry in the gentle waves of a sandy beach. And fishing nets are laid out to dry on the shore. The young bathe and play on the beach. In the midday heat, hardly anyone works and instead seek refuge in the shade. A herd of thirsty cows travels along the shore. Further south, where the coast is rocky, there's a splendid sunset. Here, nestled between the rocks and the sea, is the Sangairo Sanctuary, one of the few holiday resorts in the north. The chalets located above the small bay have an unobstructed view of the huge lake. The idyllic bay is most romantic, a remarkably tranquil spot. Restaurant and bar cling to the rock, leaving only enough room for the tables. And outside, a wonderful sandy beach. As there's no sign of an opposite shoreline, it's like being at the seaside. It's not surprising that on the banks of the lake is thought to be the cradle of mankind. The route continues further south. Again and again we travel past the modest huts of the coastal people who live mainly from fishing. The Usipa, a finger-large anchovy-like fish, is the main catch. First, the needs of the village are fulfilled, then the surplus is sold. The men do the fishing. The women prepare a porridge of maize which is molded and dried in the sun. Insima is the staple diet. Life here is both simple and hard, but the undemanding inhabitants keep in fine spirits and are content with what the lake and a little agriculture produces. The location of the small town of Inkata Bay 
is quite spectacular. A large, sheltered bay, accessible via a steep slope. Here, small boats transport the local people to various locations so that they can buy and sell, as there are hardly any roads around the lake. A restless, colourful and vibrant harbour town. And the northernmost point which famous explorer Dr David Livingston reached on his voyage of discovery. Here he was mistaken when thinking that he'd arrived at the northern end of the lake. Inkata Bay was also a center of Arab Swahili slave traders in the 18th century. Today both town and ha are like a giant street market, which comes to rest only in the dark of night. When a boat's full, it takes off. If the water's choppy, this maneuver can be quite hazardous as the boats are usually overloaded. Dangerous, but inevitable. The only alternative is a very long walk. Further south is another holiday resort, the Chinteche Inn, a section of beach between rubber plantations and paddy fields. Here there's a peaceful, sandy white beach interspersed with smooth boulders. We experience the expressive Maripenga, a dance of the indigenous menfolk, pure African culture. An emotional group dance with traditional antiphonal singing and the sound of drums which have a special, almost religious significance. Traditional dance is still very much alive here, as part of life as food and drink, an elixir of life and an expression of joy. Next morning as the sun slowly rises, Lake Malawi shines out and earns its nickname, the Sea of Stars. The shady park in front of the resort's buildings also awakens, as does the beach. Most guests are still asleep and are missing the beautiful sight of the emerging dawn. gets even more exclusive. Further south, close to Salima, is a luxurious, though remote and difficult to reach, hotel resort.
The Livingstonia Beach Hotel boasts amazing apartments whose construction is modeled on the local circular huts. The splendid view of the lake is framed with palm trees and it's difficult to believe that we are close to the wild regions of East Africa. A tiny, unexpected paradise. But also reality. The Livingstonia beach of the local people. A coast of merchants and fishermen. unstable log boats and with simple nets, each day the fishermen go onto the lake to find food for their families. A little further south in Kambiri Point is the Red Zebra Lodge and the ornamental fish farm of famous biologist Stuart Grant. From here, the colorful Malawi kitchlids are exported around the world. At night, when the fish are sleeping and therefore consume little oxygen, they're placed in small plastic bags and made ready for export. The living jewels of Lake Malawi are highly sought after among aquatic fish enthusiasts. The brightly colored males achieve the highest prices in both Europe and the USA. Provided with a good supply of oxygen and a light sedative in the water, once a month the fish are taken to the airport. Meanwhile, the employees of the Red Zebra Lodge inspect the newly arrived catch and divide them out into separate tanks according to species, size and sex. For ecotourists, the Red Zebra Lodge is the ideal starting point to explore Kambiri Point and Senga Bay. golden sandy beach, usually deserted, offers peace and tranquility. Beyond is a pad of cattle that provides fresh milk for the locals and guests of the lodge. Close to the beach, a woman draws clear groundwater. Due to the lack of any industry here, Lake Malawi's water is drinkable, although tourists are advised against drinking it. After a tranquil time in Kambiri Point, the bustling harbour city of Monkey Bay is in much contrast. Monkey Bay would probably go unobserved if it were not for the fact that the only shipyard on Lake Malawi was established in this secluded bay. Here too, fishermen are busy repairing their nets next to the almost military-like shipyard. Here, old ferries are brought back to life again, each one a minor miracle. The fishermen wait for their next trip. A journey along the lake soon shows the local living conditions with just a few settlements.
To experience unspoiled nature, a boat trip to the southern islands of Lake Malawi is recommended, an insider tip for sport divers. On a diving boat belonging to the Red Zebra Lodge, a leisurely round trip on the lake begins, with no one in any particular hurry. Nankoma, Baleri and Nakantenga are the melodic names of the three islands northwest of Cape McLear. Due to their remoteness, they've survived as a natural paradise. Diving just off the coast is like being in a gigantic aquarium. Around a thousand species of dazzling kitchlids inhabit the rocky reefs around the three islands. It's not necessary to dive deep to observe the Malawi kitchlids, the most colorful varieties are to be found just below the surface. Hiding in crevices and caves are further inhabitants of Lake Malawi, such as the Nile pike, catfish and crabs that emerge from their hiding places only at night. Most kitchlids graze red algae from blocks of granite. Crabs trap small creatures that have been startled by the fish. All Malawi kitchlids are closely related and developed from only two species of immigrant river fish over the course of millions of years. The craggy rock scenery of Lake Malawi was not always underwater. Only when the southern part of the East African Rift Valley filled with water did it become the home of the Kitchlids. On the reefs of the Nankoma, Maleri and Nakantenga Islands, anyone can discover a new species never before seen by man. For the endless expanse of the 700 meter deep lake still holds many secrets. A speedboat is the fastest way to travel back to Cape McClear, especially when the weather's good. Our next destination is the seemingly endless beach of Chembe Village, a fishing village in the north of the Cape McClear Peninsula. The evening light is an ideal photo opportunity. Most fishermen are still out on their boats and the village seems to be deserted. In front of the huts, nets are laid out to dry. Just before sunset, the local people wash dishes and clothing in the lake, while children play on the beach between the chickens, goats and ducks. An African idyll. From the terraces of many lodges, there's a fine view of village life. Enjoyed best with a sundowner. Malawi gin and tonic, the national drink. Soon the beach empties and everyone goes home before the sun disappears for good. Here there's only electric lighting outside the lodges. The next morning the local dive centre, Frogman Divers, organises a trip to the island of Tombe, a nature reserve where both cormorants and eagles can be observed. the diving instructor knows the most worthwhile diving sites in the vicinity of the reed belt.
Near the shore, young fish hide from large predatory fish among the reeds and beneath overhanging tree branches. Photographers are offered a good range of atmospheric lighting effects. There are shoals of large kitchlids in the open water. The colorful males caught the black and white striped females. Other species search for prey, camouflaged on the lake bed. With the exception of Valisnerian, a kind of seaweed, Lake Malawi has little plant life. For as soon as anything grows, it is devoured by the kitchlids, leaving only bare rocks. The variety and incredible number of kitchlids give the impression that this is a tropical coral reef. Yet, it's actually a freshwater lake. Tilapia kitchlids constantly defend their young from the lake's many predators who are in the majority and who wait for any opportunity to attack their prey. Nile pikes wait huddled together in caves for nightfall when their hunt will begin, communicating by means of natural electric signals. To observe the behavior of the Malawi kitchlids, divers need to be patient. Everywhere in Africa, it's necessary to take one's time, even underwater. Although the fish seem to swim around chaotically, they actually have well-defined territories which they defend against intruders. However, they do tolerate various other species. Deep canyons and crevices create a fascinating scene and the visibility is beyond all expectations, even for a freshwater lake. Since crocodiles avoid the clear water of the lake, there's nothing to fear. Only the limited air supply forces one to the surface after approximately an hour. Following a coffee aboard the boat, the next dive begins with a new compressed air cylinder. Tombi Island has 10 diving sites and drift diving is also available. At a water temperature of between 24 degrees Celsius and a depth of 20 meters and 28 degrees on the surface, several dives a day are possible without the need of a neoprene suit. hope that the nature reserve around Tumbi Island will continue to avoid overfishing in this ecologically sensitive coastal region. A new day provides an opportunity to visit the Rock of the Eagles with the Frogman Divers team. As named by the local people, the tiny island of Zimbabwe Rock lies just off the coast of Cape McClear. 
After a one-hour boat journey from Chembe, we arrive at the rock and are greeted by a group of bald eagles. Each year, the eagles nest on the rock and are accustomed to visitors. They're often fed by fishermen and therefore have little fear of man. From Zimbabwe Rock, it's a short journey by boat to the northeast side of Tumbi Island. Here, an underwater canyon is home to several fish. During the day, the Kitchlids are busy on their search for food. While some graze red seaweed, others catch plankton and larvae in the open water. The mouth of this Kitchlid is home to the young. To protect their young from predators, almost all Malawi kitchlids are mouth breeders. In the near shore areas of Lake Malawi, only small kitchlids are to be found. For decades, the larger fish have been caught by fishermen. The small herbivorous kitchlids are difficult to catch and less interesting as food for the local people. There are large numbers of them between the rocks. Around noon, despite all the natural beauty, everyone is feeling hungry. And Dive Master Louis raises anchor so that we can return to Chembe. Beneath a blossoming flame acacia and overlooking Tombi Island, we eat grilled fish and the traditional side dish of Insima. In the midday heat, most of Chembe's residents relax in their cool clay huts. They say that it's only the crazy tourists who go out in the noon sun. In Chembe, everything goes at a steady pace. Indeed, Malawians are believed to have the slowest average walking speed of any other people in the world. Since the onset of uncertain economic times, it's become much quieter in Chembe because fewer tourists visit the village. However, its inhabitants continue to be optimistic and look forward to more prosperous times ahead. Nets are mended, log boats repaired, children play on the beach and fishermen prepare for their next trip. In the last rays of the evening sun, children catch bait for the next day's fishing. Early the following day, the fishermen are already in their log boats on their way to catch the tasty tilapia kitchlids. Even though the water is not too choppy, it requires some skill. A boat trip with dive master Louis travels to Zimbabwe Rock, again passing by Tombi Island. But this time, the island will be explored underwater. The divers come across the nest of a 20 kilogram Campango catfish. The female guards the young catfish in the cleft of the rock and feeds them with unfertilized eggs, which it lays daily.
The large Campango catfish can't leave the nest for several weeks, otherwise the young would fall prey to kitchlids. However, kitchlid mothers keep their offspring safely in their mouth. As long as they have space, they remain well protected. The disadvantage is that for one or two months, the mother must remain hungry. Off Zimbabwe rock, the water suddenly deepens. The numerous underwater caves and caverns here are ideal for courageous divers to explore. As with every other island of the lake, Zimbabwe rock is home to various local subspecies of kitchlids. Their shape and color is different from that of the kitchlids of other areas of the lake. After the dive, Louis suggests a trip to observe the local fishermen. In calm water, we travel along the shoreline to the most popular fishing grounds off Cape McClear. Due to there being no ocean-going ships here, the residents of Chembe usually fish close to the shores of Dombwe and Tumbi Islands. It would be too dangerous to venture too far out into the lake in their log boats. A rope with a hook and a few grains of corn are all that is needed to fish here. However, the colorful creatures are too small to eat. They are used by the fishermen as bait for the Campango catfish, which is fished at night. In order to avoid encounters with hippos, the fishermen stay well away from the mainland and mainly fish near the islands. Back in Chembe, children greet us. The catch of the day is sorted and the Usipa sardines dried immediately. Small fish are smoked over wooden fires. There are several layers of them on racks laid one on top of the other and the fish is turned regularly. As the inhabitants of Chembe have no refrigeration, smoking and air drying are the only methods by which to preserve the fish. It is sold immediately. The fishermen and merchants keep busy day and night and the fires of the smoke stoves lie down. In Sima and Usipa, porridge and sardines are the daily diet of the Lakeland people. In Chembe, one may be invited into a family home. At such times, a gift is necessary. The problem is sold at the local market and soon we're enjoying insima and beans with the family, not understanding a word since they all speak Chinchewa. Around noon the village seems deserted. The villagers are either fishing or at work in the cornfields and small papaya plantations. As in most years, there's a drought. The children here are very cheerful and for some kwacha, pocket money, a teenager leads tourists through his village.
In Malawi, the tedious mashing of corn is exclusively women's work. The most beautiful view of Chembe Bay can be had from the top of the two tall mobile phone masts in the center of the town. Although guarded, a small tip and the guard even helps with the climb. When the sun is low on the reflective surface of Lake Malawi, it's like an ocean. 540 kilometers to the northern coast where the sun goes down. On a boat belonging to the Kayak Africa Lodge, the next day we travel to an exclusive destination, Mombo Island. In good weather, it's a journey of three hours. We lay anchor just off Mombo Island. In the depths, strange craters rise from the muddy seabed. Some have a diameter of more than two meters and are one meter high. They're not volcanoes, but the lecks of male kitchlets. The tiny fish spend months building the lex so as to make a good impression on passing females. As soon as the lex are completed, the dazzling blue males present themselves to the plain colored females in all their glory. A few meters from the shore are some marvelous diving sites. Here there are more aquatic plants than anywhere else in the lake, an ideal place for kitchlids to raise their young. Only guests of the exclusive Kayak Africa Lodge have access to the island, which is home to a bird sanctuary. Mombo Island means Elephant Island, as according to legend, a lone elephant once lived there. Luxury chalets stand on imposing granite formations close to the turquoise colored water. Mombo Island compares favorably with destinations such as the Seychelles. While the staff take care of the luggage, one can relax. There's nothing to do here except take it easy, walk a little and enjoy the views. Caressed by the waves, the picturesque granite blocks of Mumbo Island are a popular motif for both photographers and artists. of a dry forest, surrounded by candelabra trees and baobabs, the terraces of the chalets offer a panoramic view south to Cape Maclear. The furnishing of the chalets is simple but comfortable, with natural materials being used wherever possible. The lodge is very conservation friendly. In order not to pollute the clear water of the lake, the wastewater is purified and all resultant waste composted. The future of Mombo Island is assured. Cormorants appreciate the plentiful supply of fish around the island. They're the best fishermen around. On Mombo Island, kayaks are available to guests and it takes about an hour to travel around the island.
However, a doze in a hammock is also quite tempting. A bell rings. It's time for lunch. After a few days, a change of scenery is welcome. Ten kilometres away is Dombwe Island. Dive Master Louis docks the boat. We're expected. Louis has organised the food, drink and cooking gas. Although platforms for the tents are available on Dombwe Island, visitors must take anything else that they may need. Fresh fish is purchased from the fishermen. From the beach, fishermen can be seen in their log boats. Kayaks are also available. The wind stirs up the waves. In the protected waters just off Dombwe Island, fishing is prohibited. However, few seem to take any notice of the rules. Dombwe and Mumbo Island are home to countless colourful lizards. They've managed to reach the islands on driftwood. Iridescent tropical butterflies land beside the kayaks on the beach to feed from the water's minerals. Apart from the lapping waves, all is silent. The warden of Dombwe Island has prepared a fire. The freshly caught fish is cooked and eaten by the fire. One last adventure still awaits us. The steep ascent to Sunset Rock, 300 meters above the lake, on the summit of Dombwe Island. From here, the setting sun is at its most beautiful. Today, Lake Malawi is still known as Lake Nyasa, which in the Yao language means big water, a unique experiment of nature. The Lake of Stars is a paradise of nature where in 1980 the southern section became the first national park in the world to be used for the conservation of freshwater fish.